This segment of lab will be about the heart and also the neck vessels, a little bit about the neck vessels. That's what you'll practice this week. So um, let's get started. Hello. Um, hi, I'm Carolyn Merriman and I'm going to be your nurse today. I just washed my hands. Um, can you please tell me your full name? Lita Jones. Okay, Miss Jones, um, let me check your armband. Can you please tell me your birth date? 4-19-67. All right, thank you very much. Today, Ms. Jones, I need to look um, and listen to your heart and also check your neck vessels out. So, um, do you have any questions before we get started? No. All right, so what I, you're in a great position. Um, you're fine. I could probably lower your bed just a little bit, so I think I will try to do that while I, while I do this assessment. Just gonna take you down just a little bit more. All right, so what I'm going to do is just um, look at your neck to see if I see any pulsations or any, um, any kind of thing that's prominent. What I wanna do is, is palpate your artery, your carotid artery, so let me, it's right here on the side of your neck. That will be fine. Okay, I can feel it, and of course the carotid artery is just like any other artery, it's rated on a, a scale of um, two being normal. So it's zero where you wouldn't fill it, which not, is not a good sign, all the way to two. And you wanna check the carotid arteries um, individually, not at the same time, or you could actually have the person faint and not get enough blood to their head. Okay, so her carotid arteries are strong. They're about two to three plus. Um, and if I didn't fill them at two to three plus, if they were one, then I would want to take my um, stethoscope and listen for a brewery. Remember the definition of a brewery is turbulent blood flow in an artery, turbulent blood flow in an artery. So I would have the person just keep their head in a neutral position. I would put my bell of my stethoscope over her carotid artery. You could actually have them take a breath, if, I mean, hold their breath for just a second. And I'm checking both sides for a, a brewery, which again, turbulent blood flow. What would it be caused from? Probably that there's some kind of artery that has been occluded by plaque. That's a common thing that we're seeing um, in today's age. All right, um, Ms. Jones, I've checked your, um, your vessels in your neck, and now what I'd like to do is look at your heart area. So to do that, I wanna keep you covered. I just need to bring your gown down just a little bit, if that's okay. So I'm just gonna bring it down where I can see your, your heart area, okay? So what you're doing would be to look and then stoop down and look across. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for any visible heaves or lifts, which would be, which would be actual motions upward in the area around the heart. I also um, am looking for any pulsations. And at this point, I don't see any pulsations in this area. I will look when I raise her gown the other direction. I'm gonna go ahead and, and put my hand though over the heart in several places trying to palpate for thrills. And a thrill is a palpable vibration. Now, I'm going to put my hand over the aortic, the pulmonic, and then down on the left sternal border. And then I will put it also there on the, on the mitral area in a few minutes. But there are no um, palpable uh, thrills at this point, okay? Um, what I will do before I start the auscultation is I am just gonna raise her gown up I'm gonna raise your gown up and just um, look for any pulsations. So underneath the fifth, the, um, fifth intercostal space midclavicular line is the point of maximum impulse, sometimes known as the PMI or the apical pulse. And sometimes you can see it visibly pulsating. I don't see it visibly pulsating, and I, but I will go ahead and try to palpate for it. And then I'm also going to just put my hand here to fill for any thrills, which I don't fill at this time. We will come back to that area in just a second. All right, now that I've um, inspected and, and palpated your chest area over your heart, I need to listen. And what I need to do, Ms. Jones, is I need to listen in five different areas with both my stethoscope, uh, with both parts of my stethoscope. So the, the round part here, which is the diaphragm, and then also the bell. So, um, and I have to listen at each site for a few minutes, but that doesn't mean anything is wrong. Okay, are you comfortable? Yes. All right, so the areas that I am going to listen to 
are aortic, which is the second intercostal space, right sternal border, pulmonic, which is the second intercostal space, left sternal border, herbs, which is the third intercostal space, the left sternal border. I'm going to listen to the tricuspid, which can be at the fourth or the fifth intercostal space on the left sternal border. And then I'm going to listen to the mitral. And I'm going to listen to the mitral, which is the um, fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, for one full minute and count the apical pulse. After I finish that, then I'm going to turn and do the same thing with my bell at those sites. And this is also on your final performance exam that you will be doing that. All right, so at every site, I'm listening for a separate S1 and S2. I'm listening if the beat is regular or irregular. I'm listening to see if there's any extra heart sounds and any murmurs. Remember the definition of a murmur is turbulent blood flow in the heart. It's got the same definition as a brewery, but it is in the heart. So here is the aortic, pulmonic, creep your way down to the herbs. You can at least do those three sites and keep your person covered if it's a female. I would go ahead and cover. Ms. Jones, I'm going to come up now from the lower part. I'm going to pull up her gown and I'm going to do the, if, if you can see this, the fourth or fifth intercostal space along that sternal border is the tricuspid. And then midclavicular line, this is where is the um, mitral. At this point, I'm going to stop. I need to listen now to your pulse for a full minute. Okay. Okay, it's been a minute and your pulse is 60. Now I'm going to turn my stethoscope over to the bell and I can either start at the bottom and go backwards or start at the top again, but since I already have her uncovered, I'm going to listen now at the mitral now I'm going to the tricuspid, back to the fourth or fifth intercostal space along that left sternal. Those are the two spots. I'm going to cover her back up. I need to pull your gown down again. With my bell, I'm going to the third intercostal space for herbs. Now I'm coming back up, second intercostal space, the pulmonic. And then I'm going to go across back to the aortic, which is the second intercostal space on the right sternal, on the, along the right sternal border. Okay, um, Ms. Jones, I've uh, finished listening to your heart. And um, at this point, everything looks fine. Do you have any questions? Not at this time. So this concludes the um, heart exam and um, what I want to tell you is for your final performance exam the, the components that you will have to do that are integrated into your final performance exam are that you will be inspecting you'll have to drape your patient but you'll be inspecting their chest wall for heaves or lifts or any pulsations then you will be auscultating the aortic pulmonic herbs tricuspid and mitral with the bell stop at the at the apical pulse which is the mitral listen for 60 seconds then turn your stethoscope over to the bell and go backwards or you can come back up and start again and then again listen at those five sites mitral tricuspid herbs um, pulmonic and aortic in whichever order you want that is what is integrated into the final performance exam thank you very much